Welcome to another video tutorial with Ms. Taylor. This time we are looking at a cooling curve. Uh, in the previous video we looked at a heating curve. This time we're going to look at a cooling curve. And we're going to use methane. And you've got all of your required information there at the top. Molar mass, melting point, that's supposed to be a degree mark. Boiling point, heat suffusion and vaporization. And the specific heat capacities for the liquid and gaseous phases. All right, we're going to look at 16.04 grams of methane as it cools down from 25 degrees Celsius to a solid at negative 182 degrees Celsius. Now, before we jump into picking apart the problem, one major thing that you have to remember, whenever a substance cools, heat is released. So all values will be negative. So that's not such a big deal when you're calculating the temperature changes in between phase changes. But what that means for your heat suffusion and heat vaporization is you're going to have to specifically remember to make those things negative. And I'll remind you of that when we get to those points. So before we start doing any math, we need to plan our attack, as I like to say. So we are starting from 25 degrees Celsius. Okay. If you don't know anything about methane, then you need to compare that temperature to the melting and boiling points. Okay. The boiling point of methane is negative 164 degrees Celsius. So obviously we are well above the boiling point, so we must be dealing with a gas. So we are going to take the gas from 25 degrees Celsius down to the boiling point or what would, could also be called the condensation point to negative 164 degrees Celsius. That's a long way. Once we are at the boiling point, also known as the condensation point, it's going to go from a gas to a liquid, so condensation occurs. Pardon my excessive scrolling. Okay, once we've condensed, we have a liquid, and it's going to start at its boiling point, and we're going to cool it to negative 182 degrees Celsius, which, if you happen to remember, is also the melting point. Or freezing point, in this case. And we specifically said that we are ending at the solid phase. So that means the very last thing that happens to this methane is that it freezes. So we're going to have four separate calculations, and then to get the total amount of heat energy, we're going to take the sum of those things. So in case you had not watched the previous video, whenever you are simply heating or cooling a substance with no phase changes, we'll use the specific heat capacity equation, QMCAT. If there's a phase change, then you have to use the heat or enthalpy for that phase change. And we'll get to that. So let's do our first calculation. It's not a phase change. It's simply cooling from 25 to negative 164. So our equation is Q equals MC delta T, where Q is heat, M is mass, C is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So we have 16.04 grams. And remember, specific heat capacities are phase specific. We are in a gas phase here, so we need to use the specific heat capacity for methane when it's a gas, and that's 2.225 joules per gram degree Celsius. And the final temperature is negative 164 minus the initial, which was 25. Okay. Be careful with your units on this. Q's 
are generally going to be in joules because this unit is in joules per gram degree Celsius. The grams and the degree Celsius cancel and your answer is in joules. So your initial answer should be negative 6,745 joules. But I encourage you to go ahead and convert these to kilojoules because they tend to give you a little bit uh, easier numbers to deal with. So that would be 6.745 kilojoules. Okay, so there was step one. For step two, we are going through condensation, okay, which the energy associated with this is the same energy associated with boiling or vaporization. Okay, so we have the enthalpy or heat of vaporization, which from our constant list at the top is 1.818 excuse me, kilojoules per mole. So two things to point out. First, this involves moles. So we've got grams, we need to convert that to moles. And since this is actually cooling, you could call this the heat of condensing, it's going to be negative. All right, now I specifically chose 16.04 grams as our amount because that's also the molar mass of methane. So we've actually got exactly one mole. Saving myself a little bit on the calculations. So for this, we're just going to say one mole times 8.18 kilojoules per mole. Of course, that will be, oh, don't forget the negative sign. So that will be negative 8.18 kilojoules. All right, our next step is we are going to continue to cool our now liquid methane from negative 164 to negative 182. So this is going to be another Q equals MC delta T. 16.04 grams times specific heat capacity for liquid methane is 3.3 joules per gram degree Celsius. And our final temperature is negative 182 minus the initial, which is negative 164. And as you would expect, you should get a negative number, negative 952.8 joules. And we're going to go ahead and convert that to negative 0.9528 kilojoules. Almost finished. Our last step was to freeze because we end up with a solid at the freezing point. And our enthalpy of fusion, and that's why they call it enthalpy of fusion, because whenever it freezes, it actually fuses, is 0.94 kilojoules per mole. And again, because this is actually freezing, we need to make sure that it's negative. So we already determined that we only had one mole. And I'm sure you can do that calculation in your head, but for the sake of process, I'm writing it out. Oop, and I'm about to forget my negative sign, which is why I'm putting them in blue as a reminder. Okay, so we've actually got all four heats that are released. So the last thing we need to do is get Q total. So step one gave us negative 6.745 kilojoules. Step two gave us negative 8.18 kilojoules. Step three gave us negative 0.9528 kilojoules. And step four gave us negative 0.94 kilojoules. So if we add that all together and round to three sig figs, it is negative 16.8 kilojoules. So 
as methane cools from 25 degrees Celsius to net to a solid at negative 182 degrees Celsius, 16.8 kilojoules of energy are released. That's the only meaning of the sign. As you go further in science, you'll see that the sign simply indicates direction. In this case, if heat is negative, that means it's released and it's exothermic. Thanks for watching.